It is very important to initialize our weights properly, and we're going to look at a simple statistical analysis of weights and see what we have to do. Okay, so most of the time we initialize our weights, our inputs, with uh, inputs from normal distribution 0, 1, mean 0, standard deviation 1. And we must, not, we must not scale our weights the same way as our inputs. And I'm taking this from an article written for uh, Towards Data Science, and it references the work by Kaming Hay, who devised in 2015, I think it was, a technique for initializing weights in a good way. Previously, the analysis was done by Bengio and co-workers in 2010. So again, you can see that it takes a long time, that 210, 215, Dellinger's article, 2019, it takes, that's a span of almost 10 years. And I think here's my chance to go off a little tangential and say that this stuff is hard. Don't get fooled by all the hype. You have smart people like Bengio and they're getting, you know, work is being done on top of that. You know this is not easy and you must know linear algebra you must know calculus, and you must know probability, and obviously programming. So it's, it's a real haul, and you have to practice. Okay, let's follow Dellinger's article. It's fairly straightforward. You take a 100-layer network with each layer having 512 neurons, and you create a 100 random matrices to map through the network. Uh, all the elements are chosen from N01, both for the matrices and the nodes. And you do a forward pass, and guess what? At layer 29, it all blows up. It's too big. So we have to fix it. So that's the first experiment. The second experiment is same conditions, so let's make it smaller. Multiply each matrix by 0 0.01. Scale the weights. Result on forward pass, mean of zero and standard deviation of zero. That means we're not going anywhere and we're disconnected from each other in terms of if I'm a weight. So that's, that's essentially related to vanishing gradients. But if the weights are zero, you're not going anywhere in terms of statistical behavior. All right, so now this thing is basic probability. If the input x has 512 elements chosen from n01, and let's say matrix A is also the same, 512 by 512 chosen from n01, then the output from that first stage is y equal ax. And of course, you can apply that argument all the way through. Instead of x the input, you'd have the activation. Here, we're not using any activation functions. So we're just multiplying by 1. So this is a good model. y equals ax. Well, what's the mean and standard deviation of y? Uh, here's a probability exercise for you. If you have sum and products of random variables and so on, independently, identically distributed, you can show the mean of y is 0 and the standard deviation is square root of 512. So that means. If you take the entries of A, our weight matrix, and divide by square root of 512, yay, we did it. Y now has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 to within numerical error. Now, let's apply this to convolutional networks, which we're going to look at later. We're going to follow the results of He et al. 2015. References given. And there's the recipe. You create a matrix at each layer. You populate with entries chosen from N01. Set the biases all to 0. Normalize matrix by square root of 2 divided by N. 
where n is the number of incoming connections, known as the fan into the current layer from the previous layer. The results are excellent for the normal ReLUs. And that's all for looking at the problem of weight initialization.